All right, y'all, 8 o'clock, we starting. I don't know where everybody else is, but we are going to start, because it has been a while since I've seen y'all. Um, when we left last time, we were still working in 1.2, yeah, 1.2, and <coughs> we only had 12, uh, no, 11 pages left in this chapter. So we're going to, at the end of class today, we're going to talk about when is the homework for chapter one going to be due, when is the test for chapter one going to be due, um, because I have a little bit left in 1.2, and then we're going to start thinking on, uh, then we're going to start working on um, the test, the homework, and um, finishing up chapter one, and then going into chapter two. Um, when we left last time, we had talked about uh, quantitative and qualitative. And we said the N for quantitative was the numbers, the L for qualitative was the letters, okay? And then we had started talking about, at the very end of class, we had started talking about discrete and continuous. And some of us got it, some of us didn't get it. Discrete was when it was specific numbers, not necessarily whole numbers, but it can only be a certain list of numbers like shoe sizes. Shoe sizes can be nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half. It can't be every single number in the world. It can only be from a certain list of numbers. Continuous numbers can be any number, 1.573429. It can be any number that you choose. Discrete can only be specific numbers, okay? So, and some of you, I think, were brain dead when we got to this, so I left a couple of examples up there. And we had done a couple of examples, and I said, don't freak out on me. We're going to do a couple more. Um, let me see. We had done 13, 14, 15. So we're going to start, and again, we're just doing right now discrete or continuous. Is it discrete or is it continuous? So can it be any number or can it be a specific number? So the clerk of U.S. House of Representatives records the number of representatives. So how many representatives there are? Can that be any number in the world or can that only be a certain number? So there can be 24 representatives or there can be 56 representatives. So it has to be a whole number because we're talking about people. So that one's going to be discrete. The number of Corvettes manufactured. Discrete. You can't manufacture 2.36 Corvettes. Nobody's going to buy that. It's either going to be two Corvettes or it's going to be three Corvettes. So that's going to be discrete. All right, I'll let you try 18 through 20. Discrete or continuous? Bryant came in. Frederick came in. Renique was not here. Alondis is not here. Sharice Johnson did not come in. Forget. Did not come in. Dominique.
discrete or continuous. So for the first one, we're studying the relationship between the lengths of feet and the height of the footprint at a crime scene. Continuous. And I have some people who say it's according to what kind of ruler you're using. Um, on your test, I'm going to be very specific. On your homework, I'm not as forgiving because y'all can do it over and over and over again. Students in a statistics class record the exact length of times they secretly use their smartphones. That one again, it could go either way. You could find it either way. Um, they say continuous because they could say, oh, they used it for three minutes, um, 42.6 seconds. The Insurance Institute collects data consisting of the number of motor vehicle fatalities. Discrete. That one's going to be discrete because you can't have part of a person die. Either a whole person died or nobody died. We good? Alright, then down here is just a different type of problem. We're still doing the same thing. It says identify the individual's variables and data corresponding to the variables and determine whether each variable is Determine whether each variable is qualitative, continuous, or discrete. So, I'm, who am I? I'm getting information about cars, BMWs, and what they tell me, their body style, their weight, the number of seats. So, the first thing I want to know is what are the individuals? Who am I asking? Who am I getting my information from? The model of the cars. The cars. I'm getting my information from the car. So, this is my individuals. Those are my individuals. Those are the people I'm asking. John, Bill, Sue, whatever. I'm asking the three series, the five series, the six series, the seven series. Those are the people I'm asking. Now, what do I want to... Get a different color. The variables is what do I want to know from those cars, from those people. What do I want to know from those people? What am I asking those cars? Am I asking about their engines? I'm asking about their body style, their weight, the number of seats. So all of these are going to be their variables. And then what they tell me, what they tell me, their answers are their data. So, these are my people, these are the questions I ask them, and then these are their answers. So that's what they wanted to know first. Now they want to know, are those answers qualitative, which means do they have letters? Or are they quantitative, which means they have numbers? And if they have numbers, are they any number? Or are they specific numbers? Okay, so for this, for this set, is it qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. It's qualitative because it's letters. Qualitative or quantitative? Quantitative. Now, is it continuous or is it discrete? Continuous. Weight can be anything. Even though those happen to be whole numbers, they could be anything because it's weight. Here, quantitative or qualitative? Quantitative because it's numbers. Is it discrete or continuous? Discrete. Why is it discrete? Bodies don't come in halves. Bodies don't come in halves. You either have a two-seater car or three-seater car. You can't have a 2.29 seater car. Okay? So this one is going to be this is going to be qualitative because it has letters. This, these are going to be quantitative because they have numbers. This one is going to be continuous because it can be any number. 
and this one's going to be discrete because you can only have two six, three six, four six, five six. Making sense? All right. Now I'm going to put. We're going to add another level. I'm going to. so far. Right here. Okay. We've done qualitative, we've done quantitative, we've done discrete, we've done continuous. So qualitative is when your answer has letters. Quantitative is when it has numbers. Continuous is when it's any number. Discrete is when it's certain numbers. We're good so far. Now we're adding four more. What's that certain number three? certain numbers. Now, letter answers can be broken down into two things. So if I say, okay, my answers are chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, then those are just nominal answers. They're just names. They're just everyday names. Honda, Civic, Toyota, those are just names. Or they're ordinal. They can be put in a specific order. Small, medium, large. Compact, mid-size, SUV. So if you can put them in an order, everybody can put them in the same order, that is an ordinal. So this means meaningful order. This means just names. So this would be like Honda, Toyota, um, Nissan, this would be like um, great, good, sucks. So if we could put it in a meaningful ordinal order, it would be ordinal. If it's just a bunch of names, then it's going to be nominal. And those are only for qualitative or letter answers. Now, off of quantitative, which are our numbers, we can either say it's discrete or it's continuous. Off of each one of those, we're going to call an interval or ratio. Now, both of the intervals and both of the ratios mean the same thing. I'm going to come down just a little bit and tell you what interval and ratio mean. Interval is when zero does not mean zero. You're going to yell at me. Give me just a second. Ratio is when zero means zero. And the way that I remember that one, ratio has an O. That tells me that zero means zero. Ratio means zero means zero. So when we were doing this, I told you, okay, social security numbers are letters, are numbers, but they're really not numbers, they're letters. So now I'm telling you that sometimes numbers are letters, and now I'm telling you that zero is not zero, but sometimes it's zero. Did you have a good weekend? I did! <laughs> so, when is zero not zero, and when is zero zero? If I ate zero cookies, do you agree I ate nothing? I ate zero cookies, I ate nothing. Zero would be zero. I gained zero pounds. I gained nothing. I walked zero miles. I walked nothing. Those are all examples of zero is zero. If it's zero degrees outside, is there nothing outside? It's freaking cold. Mm -hmm. um, if you were born in the year zero, were you born in the year of nothing? There were dinosaurs, and there were trees, and there was water. <coughs> you were born in the year of something. So zero meant something other than nothing. If you wear a size zero, does that mean you're nothing? 
That means we hate you. <laughs> means you're skinny. <laughs> so sometimes zero means there's nothing there, but sometimes zero means something other than zero. Hmm. <coughs> yes. Certain numbers. Let me rewrite it. Certain numbers. So this would be if you ate zero cookies or if you gained zero pounds or if you walked zero miles. That all means you did nothing, you ate nothing, you gained nothing. Those are all zero means zero. Interval would be if it's zero degrees, that means it's cold. If you wear a size zero, that means you're skinny. If you were born in the year zero, there were dinosaurs and water. It wasn't the year of nothing. So when you're doing interval and your ratio, you have to say, what does zero mean? If zero means zero, then it's ratio. If zero means something else, then it's interval. Okay. So what we're going to do for these next few problems is we're going to start at the front and we're going to work our way. So we're going to say, a lot of y'all pray, oh, let it be qualitative because I just have one choice, nominal or ordinal. Or if it's quantitative, you've got to say, is it discrete or continuous? And then you've got to say, is it interval or ratio? Okay. So, you're not going to have this little sheet right here. You're going to have to memorize that. And what I tell my students is you're going to be given scratch paper by the testing assistant. And if this is something that you need to dump your brain and write down, dump it. And I say dump it before you even open your test. Because as soon as y'all see that first problem, y'all go brain dead. So if this is something you need to just jot down, that's not going to be given to you. You're going to have to know that. All right. So for the first problem. U.S. News and World Report periodically provides its ranking of national universities in a recent year for Princeton, Harvard, and Yale. And they were one, two, and three respectively. So is this qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. This is qualitative because they're letters. Is it nominal or ordinal? Ordinal. This is ordinal because they're telling you how they were ranked. They were ranked one, two, and three. They're telling you what order they're in. So this would be the answer, qualitative ordinal. <clears throat> For the presidential election 2016, ABC News conducts an exit poll in which voters were asked to identify Democratic, Republican, so on. Qualitative or quantitative? Quantitative. So we're saying Democratic, Republican, blah, blah, blah. So qualitative because it has letters. Nominal or ordinal? Raise your hand if you think it's nominal. Raise your hand if you think it's ordinal. Raise your hand if you don't know. Raise your hand if you don't care. <laughs> All right. Nominal is if everybody can put those in the same meaningful order. So if she says, I want Democratic first and Republican second, Liberal next and whatever, is that the same order that everybody's going to put it in? No. So it's going to be nominal. They're just listing them. I'm going to let y'all try some. Let me take this little thing right here, and I'm going to pull it down just so you can have it just for a minute. Well, maybe I can get it in there. I'll put it up here, and then I'll move it down. 
you're going to give me all the way across. We'll do 23 and 24 and then I'll move it down. <coughs> What do you think about 23? Qualitative. Okay, he says qualitative, qualitative. because they're letters. Nominal or ordinal? Ordinal. Does it say about a weight? should be qualitative and ordinal because it says M&M &M weights and I think they could be put in order by their weights. As long as you know what you're doing and you can justify your answer, I'll give it to you. I just want you to know the stats. I want you to know the concept. I would give it to you. The book says qualitative nominal. I totally see where you're getting the ordinal from because you're putting it in order by the weights. They say nominal because they're just colors. Um, Brian, what do you say about 24? All right, let's do it. Why don't you do it together? Um, fast food service times. A research records the time intervals beginning from the time they place their orders until they receive the order. So if you drive up to McDonald's, they start a clock from the time you pull up to the time you get your food. Quantitative. Is it discrete or continuous? Okay, nominal or ordinal? What does zero mean? What do you mean nominal or ordinal? I mean interval or ratio. I don't know why I said nominal or ordinal. Interval or ratio. You gotta keep me on toes, boo. Um, it's discrete, right? No, uh it's continuous. So it was quantitative <coughs> and it was continuous. Now we're asking, is it interval or is it ratio? And to ask yourself that, you have to say, what does zero mean? It's going to be zero means zero. So what is it going to be? There you go. So if I, hold on, let me move these down. So when you're doing interval and ratio, you're asking yourself, what does zero seconds mean? If you pulled up to McDonald's, and it took you zero seconds to get your food, what does that mean? It took zero seconds. You didn't take any time. You didn't order anything. It took you nothing. So zero means zero. Therefore, it is ratio. Zero means zero. All right, try the next two. Towards the years in which they won the World Series. Some of these are easier, some of these are harder.
gram. What do you say? Twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Quantitative. Quantitative. The years is a number, so that's quantitative. Discrete or continuous? Discrete. Discrete, because we can only do 2000, 2001, 2002. Ratio or interval? And for that, you have to say, what if they won the World Series in the year zero? In the year zero. Is the year zero the year of nothing? So is it interval or is it ratio? Interval. Interval. Good. They won the World Series when there were dinosaurs and there was water and there was trees and there was uh, wearing no clothes, whatever you want to say. Alright, who thinks they know 26? Give it to me, girl. <coughs> What do we say? What is Oh, but I thought it was going off the stars. That's where I went with it. It's what happened at first, the movies. Okay. The author rated the movie. <coughs> blah, blah, blah. With five stars on a scale of five stars. So they're rating it with stars. Qualitative. It's going to be qualitative. We're giving it stars. Gotcha. Okay. So would it be order because yeah. one star means it sucks and five stars means it's great? One star means it sucks, five stars means it's great. So everybody knows when they see one star, don't go see the movie. And when they see five stars, they mean we need to go see the movie. So everybody knows the order of the stars. So, we are doing stars, we're not doing numbers, we're doing stars. So that means it's qualitative. Even though it's not letters, it's things. And it's ordinal. Because one star sucks, five stars is good. Alright, I'm going to come around and look as y'all do these. You have to 39. The more you do, the easier it gets.